full of hell and nothing when no birds sang album review let's chat about it hey friends what's going on john here from what's spinning here tonight to chat about uh this collaborative record between full of hell and nothing now th th this is a surprise for me i mean yes i knew the album was coming out but seeing it come down the pipe i i was very pleasantly surprised full of hell if you don't know they are just modern grindcore and noise and just power violent staples i mean their early records like uh roots of earth are consuming my house and rudiments and mutilation they are just gnarly nasty in your face blasts of noise my god these albums are loud and at the time i wasn't that into them i mean i think they're fine at the end of the day i mean they're okay uh, but to me uh, when they came out i thought that this was just another grind core and power violence act that was doing it fine but as they move forward and dropped albums like trumpeting ecstasy they started taking more risks the production was a little bit cleaner uh, not to mention i just thought that all around their energy was more solid and their song structures were more concrete they seemed like they were trying new things and i respect that double goes for their follow-up album weeping choir uh, both of those records ended up in my top 20 but if you know anything about Full of Hell, it is when they drop the Split album or, you know, the Split EP with another band that things get really interesting. Whether it be their early Split works, like their stuff with Code Orange Kids, Core Code Orange, also Nails. They really started turning my head around with those and things got only more interesting when they started dropping albums with Merzbow, The Body. Also, that Primitive Man split release that they put out earlier this year. It's the most interesting for me when Full of Hell bring a guest to the table with them. So, when I heard that they were going to be putting out a split record with Philly-based shoegaze band uh, Nothing, uh, this really caught my eye because Nothing is a band that I've had a lot of different feelings on. I mean, the band with Guilty of Everything seemingly overnight reinvigorated my hope for modern shoegaze, and they took it all away with their follow-up album tired of tomorrow don't at me i can't sit through it it is absolutely god awful but they reminded me what they could do with dance on the blacktop and i feel like they put out one of the most uh concrete shoegaze records of the last 10 years or so with the great dismal on paper, I've been drooling to hear this album, just to hear the contrast of sounds back to back. Thought the singles were pretty cool, and overall, this is one of the more interesting collaborations you're going to hear this year. Take, for example, like Stars in the Firmament. This track is a very glistening, sunny track. Super pensive, lonely sounding guitars, you know the drill. And as this track you know, pushes forward, it gets even more dreamy and surreal as the sounds of nothing sort of overwhelm this track. And you know what? It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, uh, this is just a really solid shoegazy tune from nothing. Is it the heaviest thing they put out? No, but it has a serenity to it that's really nice. And let me tell you, the duality of this record, the sounds, uh, that alone is interesting enough to make this worth a listen. Forever Well, uh, probably my favorite track here. I love this thing. This, this is home for me. The tension here. My God, it's some of the most tension that I've heard all year. And when this track really does take off and those guitars come crashing in, it is a serious fusion of both of their sounds in a really great way. It's got the visceral energy of Full of Hell, but it's also got the shimmering glitz of nothing stuff. I think it's good enough to be a single. I think it's the best track here. I mean, it's full of fiery energy, but it's also really beautiful in parts. That thought alone only gets more and more so as this album pushes onwards. Wild Blue is staggering. This is a super serene, atmospheric track with an absolutely uh, pristine production here. It's a complete instrumental, but the waves of instrumentals that we get here, layer after layer, there's so many beautiful, intricate details. I love how both Full of Hell and Nothing are both really pushing themselves. It's drony and it's psychedelic, but it's also not too subtle, which is, you know, some of my issues with tracks like this usually. This album style track, When No Birds Sang, I cannot stress this enough. This is beautiful. It's a hazy, meditative, uh, super kaleidoscopic shoegaze track, to start at least. And if you're not into these sounds and you want something maybe a little less subtle, I get it. But even when the guitars pop in a little heavier and it just becomes more of a standard nothing track, there is something different about it here. The bulkiness of it, the crashing of the guitars. 
It's going to alienate some because it's borderline abrasive, but I think it's a really interesting step for the band, both of these bands. And Spen the Grace uh, finishes off this album, and we are going to wrap this album up after three or four really beautiful tracks with uh, one of the most hellish and truly, like, on the edge of my seat, tension, uh, intense tracks that I've heard this year. I don't think I've been on the edge of my seat more this year than I have for this track, and that's crazy to even think of. The whisper, quiet, vocals, alongside of these very twisted, jarring guitars. It's a whopping one-two punch. And for those that wanted something a little more in your face when that big, sludgy metal riff just comes crashing in and stares you right in the face, here it is. It is a gnarly, nasty finale that doesn't give a shit what you think about it, man. And once again, it's just a great push for both artists, and that's all I really wanted to hear. Yeah, this album's very solid, but I do have to take a big chunk off because uh, the first track that we get here, Rose Tinted World, I, I think it's really under par, shockingly so, compared to the rest of this project. It's the longest track here, and sadly, it's kind of a mess. So much of this record is the two bands playing to each other's strengths and knowing how to push one another. But this is a harsh, noisy, wild track. But this is just like, it's definitely a much more wild and intense and noisy track, but it's also really sloppy. And you know what? I know people that are going to love this. I mean, a lot of this track sounds like a little bit of a, a slower, full of hell track with just a little bit extra guitar feedback. But compared to the other five tracks on this album, as far as a cohesive idea, this is not it. It does give you a great sense of impending doom, that's for sure. The voiceover is really cool as well, but there's just so much better material here. Still though, Definitely worth a listen. A really interesting, sort of experimental, atmospheric sludge metal project that sees two bands from completely two different genres really pushing themselves in a great way. The right way, honestly. And yeah, that first really long track just is not for me, but most of this is pretty goddamn cool. I'm feeling a light 8 on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.